One of the most celebrated Zuiko lenses that is universally admired is the 12 to 100 Pro. That is 24 to 200 in 35 mm film, a mid-range telephoto f4 constant aperture over its eight and a half times zoom ratio. It is an optic that crosses the divide between all-purpose and specialist. Its capabilities feature techniques thought to be difficult a few years ago and certainly unheard of, all made possible by several qualities exclusive to micro four-thirds, but dismissed by those who rely on the instant gratification of today's computerized cameras and for whom the number of pixels are more important. I have successfully tried other lenses in the past that include the 17mm Prime used here at Litchfield Cathedral and the amazing 7-14 Pro Zoom at Holy Trinity Long Melford. But when the choice is one lens only, the 12-100 Pro takes the prize. Take this shot of item moot. It is handheld at a fifth of a second, a shutter speed disbelieved by some photographers. I have even been told that it can't be right. Holding my breath and shooting between heartbeats has helped. When used with the EM1, as here, or the more recent OM5, I am profiting from two image stabilizers working together. But have you noticed the extended depth of field? Difficult in low light when the camera is forced to use its largest aperture, limiting depth of field. Because the sensor is smaller, this is easier to achieve with micro four-thirds. But please don't make the common mistake that the penalty for extended depth of field is not being able to create a narrow depth of field, that is, to throw the background out of focus. This claim is often made by photographers who do not understand photo basics. If they are aware of them, the numbers might look different, but the results with the right expertise look very similar. This expertise becomes invaluable inside a church or a stately home where light is low and tripods cannot be used, forcing the photographer to handhold. Depth of field is improved with a smaller aperture, but that means resorting to a longer shutter speed, increasing the difficulty of hand holding. Depth of field can also be extended with a wide angle lens or by increasing the ISO, the latter permitting the use of a shorter shutter speed with a small aperture, both of which may be undesirable in certain circumstances restricting creativity, such as using a telephoto lens which will reduce depth of field. Further problems come into play with variable aperture zooms. You may have f2.8 at wide angle, but as you zoom towards telephoto, then depending on the power of the zoom, you can lose as much as two whole stops of light at full telephoto, making hand-holding increasingly difficult. The Suico 12-100 Pro lens resolves several of these problems. First, it is constant aperture over its entire zoom range. Factor 4 maximum aperture may not appear sufficiently wide for hand-holding in low light, but the lens has its own image stabilizer that works with the camera stabilizer, permitting hand-holding up to one second, possibly longer. Finally, Micro Four Thirds technology permits extended depth of field at most settings without sacrificing differential focusing when required, that is, for photographers not wedded to auto. I conclude with a series of photographs demonstrating these various points, some of which have been published. I don't just talk pixels and numbers, instead I present the visual proof but you will have to accept my word that I was hand-holding and not resting the camera on a convenient ledge. 
Opus. 